In our next assignment, we're going to be animating a humanoid. And to do that, I'm going to give you a humanoid mesh to start out with. But if we go look at this mesh, we'll see that it's constructed with greater density kind of near the elbows, the neck, the knees, around the thighs and shoulders, because those are places where it's going to bend a lot. Now, to start out with, let's make sure our cursor is down here at the origin, which it is. If it isn't, hit Shift S and then choose Cursor to World Origin. Now we're going to add our, our armature. This is our skeleton, basically. And right now it only has one bone. Uh, but I am going to start editing this by going into Edit Mode. And I'm going to select this whole bone and move it up. Notice I'm in edit mode, though. I'm not actually moving the armature. The armature is still down here. So the problem is, is that my bone disappears because I'm in solid mode. And I could move into wireframe mode, but that can get kind of messy and hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to leave it in solid mode and instead go over to the object properties, scroll down to where it says viewport display, and click in front. And what that does is it makes sure that I'm always able to see my rig. Now that I have that done, I'm going to line up right from the front. And I'm going to adjust the position of this. This will be my torso bone. So I'm going to move up. You could actually have more than one bone for like upper torso, lower torso. I'm just going to use one for simplicity. And so then I'm going to set that as like my spine. So think of that kind of as your spine. Now that I have my spine, I'll extrude with E to create my neck. And I'm going to make sure it goes straight up by hitting the Z key. And then I'll extrude again, once again, going straight up for the head. And then now it's time to do the bones that go off to the side. So I'm going to create a bone for the collar. Since I'm lined straight up, I don't need to worry about it going back and forth on me. I can just extrude and drag it to where I want it to be. And then extrude for that. And then extrude for that. So what I've just extruded is the collar, the upper arm, and the lower arm. And I'm going to go down, extrude for the pelvis, extrude for the thigh, and then extrude for the shin. And before I go on, I need to make sure that I'm naming these because names will matter when we go to try to create the other side. You don't want to create the other side by hand because you may end up with it not being symmetric. So I'm going to just go through and name each of these. So I'm going to click on a bone and I'm going to go to the bone properties. And we're going to change that to be the head. We'll change this to be the neck. I'll change this to be the torso. This would be the collar. But this is the collar on the left-hand side. So I'm going to put dot L. And it's important that you do that separation between the name and the side. And then I'm going to do uh, upper arm dot L. And the reason I'm using dot L is because this is the left side from this character's perspective. Not from my perspective. From my perspective, it's on the right-hand side. But as far as this character facing me, that's their left side. And then this will be the lower arm dot L. And so then I'll go down to this bone. This will be the pelvis, let's say, dot L. This will be the thigh, oops, thigh dot not thing, thigh.l. And then this will be the shin.l. And before we go any further, it's important that we make sure our joints are in the right spot. So I am going to switch over to wireframe mode for a moment. And I'm going to line up my bone endpoints where my bending is happening. So I'm just going to try to line these up so they're lined up with the mesh.
And when I'm happy with where it is, then we can continue on to the next step. So at this point, I have all of the bones in a line, and I have them named, and I have all the bones on the left-hand side, and I have them named. Let's go back to solid view, and we're going to select all of the bones. Very important that we've already named them with the dot L. I'm going to select all the bones on the left-hand side, but not the bones in the center. And then we are going to right-click on this. Just make sure everything's selected first. Right-click, and we're going to choose this Symmetrize option, which basically means mirror over to the other side symmetrically. So Symmetrize. And notice that it automatically created bones on the other side, but more importantly, it also named them correctly. So this is now color.r, upper arm.r, lower arm.r, pelvis.r, thigh.r, and shin.r. And before we go on to the next step, it's very important that if you see that things don't appear to be bending in the right spot, like I think these should be up a little higher, then make sure you make those adjustments now, but make sure that you're making it uh, to both sides, either by using the symmetry option up here at the top. So like if I click X here, now watch what happens. So see, I can adjust both sides or by selecting both sides at the same time and then making your adjustments. But once you feel like you're ready to move on to the next step, then we're going to get out of edit mode. We are going to select the mesh first, and then we're going to select the armature because we are going to parent the mesh. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to parent the mesh to the armature. So the armature will become the parent. And to do that, I select the mesh first and then make sure the armature is selected second so it is the actively selected object. And to parent, we're going to hit Control P. And I'm going to use automatic weights. There are several different options, but in this case, we're going to use this one to make life easy on us. So with automatic weights, it doesn't look like much happened but something did. If you come over to the side, you'll see that here's our armature, and the body is now a child of the armature in the hierarchy over here. What did that do for us? Well, if we go select our, or if we select our armature, and then go into pose mode, now if I select one of these bones, notice that it controls my body. And I can rotate this one, I can rotate this one, I can rotate this one, and now I have the ability to pose various parts of the body, and then we'll work on the animation side of it in our next installment.